Hi, I'm Chris Schlesinger, chef owner of the East Coast Grill here in beautiful downtown Inman Square in Cambridge. Uh, we're a seafood restaurant, been around 25 years, and today we're going to talk about grilling seafood. You need to look no further than the beaches of the world to see the long-standing relationship between fires and seafood. And uh, despite what a lot of people think, seafood's actually pretty easy to cook on the grill. So I'll go through a diff couple different kinds. Uh, I think probably the easiest type of seafood to cook on the grill are the, the mollusks, like the clam and the oyster and the uh, mussel. And what we do with those, we can put those directly on the fire and the juices inside steam and they pop open. So I would say your clams and your oysters are kind of at the bottom. Next you have your things like shrimp and scallops, which are relatively small, work really well with grilling. Uh, next you have what we're going to do, uh, are probably the easier level after that is your steak fish. This is tuna. The other type of steak fish you might run into is like swordfish steak or salmon steak. And these are relatively easy to grill because they're, uh, they're sturdy, right? The next level is your fillet fish. This is a mahi-mahi, cod, striped bass, bluefish. This is a little bit more difficult, but not really. Um, I think there are three key tips to grilling seafood. One is to have a nice, hot, clean grill, right? And with the way we do that is with a wire metal brush. So we make sure the grill's very clean and hot. Um, the next, we lightly oil the fish. We don't like to oil it heavy. We don't want any oil to drip down in the fire, but we want to lightly oil it. And we're going to put a little salt and pepper on it. So one, clean hot grill, two, lightly oil. The third and final tip is once the, once the fish goes down on the grill, allow it to sit on the grill for a couple minutes before you start to fool with it. And what this does is this allows a sear to develop between the surface of the fish and the grill, facilitating the turning. A lot of people like to use spatulas. I prefer tongs. So we'll get this uh, seared up a little bit and in the meantime, uh, we'll prepare the other. The, we're doing a Latin style preparation on this uh, grilled mahi mahi with pineapple salsa and a little grilled avocado. So uh, we get that ready and we have a little avocado. Again, just light oil. And then we have a little spice mixture, a Latin spice mixture, cumin, coriander, chili, and we'll put that on and we'll do that. So uh, one of the other aspects, let's see if we can, with the spatula, sometimes the corn will dig, but with the uh, tongs, we can just kind of lift it up and we'll turn it on a 45 degree angle, which is not totally necessary, but then you get the nice Sizzler Steakhouse cross marks on it. And uh, now our clams are just starting to open here. And once, they, uh, once they're totally done, it's almost like the clam has a self-timer and it'll, it'll pop right open. Um, other things to be aware of when you're grilling, uh, ways to predict how hot the fire is, what we like to do is we hold our hand about four inches off the grill and see how long we can hold it there. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. So that's three Mississippi's a pretty hot fire. Four to five is medium, five to seven is, is low. So with the seafood, we'd like to have a hot fire because we'd like to get a sear on the outside, a little bit of flavor char, and then have it still be uh, nice and moist and juicy on the inside. So let's flip that and see, we have a nice hatch marks on the outside. As we see how that clam just kind of opened right up. This is one of my favorite ways we go out and dig clams and just get them and put them right on the fire. And then we might have a little foil pan off to the side with butter and garlic and white wine. And we can put the clams right in there and they get a little juice there. So we got our avocado nice and uh, nice and grilled up. Our clams here, let's get our plate ready. So This is a pineapple salsa. It's pretty simple. Um, pineapple, red and green uh, peppers, red onions, 
lime juice, cilantro, and a little bit of chilies. Pretty simple, but the bright flavors really help set off the uh, the kind of mellowness of the uh, mahi. So these clams put on the dish. Now one of the keys to cooking seafood, besides the other three that I mentioned, is the obvious one, which is that's to cook the seafood properly, right? So you have, when you're talking about doneness, you have underdone, 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 done, done, overdone, overdone, overdone. So you want to put the seafood in the window. And the one sure, in the window of doneness, and the one sure way to do that is to, what we like to call, is the uh, cheat, cheat and peak method. So we kind of bend it a little bit and we look into it without destroying the fish. And what we see there is a little translucence, so that fish requires some more time. Now, sometimes at home with my grill, when I see that the fish is not getting done quickly enough and I want to get it done in the morning a little bit quicker, I might cover it with a uh, disposable pie tin or something like that. So that's probably going to take two or three more minutes. Okay, my incredible chef sense is telling me this is done, but again, it's much more important to get the fish properly done. So again, we like to look into it and we like to manipulate a little bit. And when fish is done, it's the uh, just barely lack of transparency and uh, just barely opaque. So as you see, that's pretty well done. So we're gonna put it on the plate and put a little, that nice spice rub on it. Latin grilled mahi-mahi, pineapple salsa, grilled avocado and clams.